Thank you, Anya. Hello, everybody. Welcome. I'm incredibly excited. Are you excited today to be here? This is the McGill Sustainability Systems Initiative. I haven't seen anything like this at McGill since I joined in 2003. We're at the dawn of a completely new way of doing research at McGill, I think. That's, that's what's happening today. It's about coalescing a nascent, latent network of researchers who are all concerned about the issue, the challenges of the 21st century. The buzzword is sustainability today, and we're worried about how the planet will be 100 years from now as our global human population goes through a massive demographic transition, comes away from exponential growth, stabilizes to a, a new population, who knows where, 9, 11 billion? And during that time, cities are going to be the, the crucible of that change. And we need to keep them at the very focus uh, of our research agenda uh, for sustainability systems. Our theme is adapting urban environments for the future. Uh, and I have the distinct pleasure and honor to work with uh, two other colleagues, Kevin Manau, who, is, who will join us in a few minutes when he's done teaching, and David Wexmuth, who will tag team with me in a few short moments to give you his take on the, the, the latter half of our talk. I've been told many times that natural scientists cannot talk to social scientists and vice versa. We don't speak the same language. I can tell you that that is wrong. We have an amazing rapport, the three of us, and it's, I think it's testimony to the, um, the cross-cutting nature of the problem of urban, urban sustainability that we can have colleagues uh, from biology, geography, and urban planning come together around this theme. We're also organized in ascending order of the amount of hair going from left to right. <laughs> David is actually a, a net contributor to global warming because he sucks up heat, and I'm reflecting, reflecting heat. So I told you about this demographic transition. Yes, it's a massive demographic transition, but just a few short years ago, the global human population became majority urban. 54% of the global population now lives in cities. By 2050, we're gonna add another 2.5 billion people to cities. Now, billions are a big number. What does that mean? It means that two out of every three people will be living in cities this century. I mean, it's huge. Most of the people on this planet are going to experience this transition, this environmental sustainability transition, in an urban context. So, sure, cities are part of the problem. They have a huge ecological footprint, but they are also part of the solution. Think about how U.S. cities rallied around COP and the climate agreement when there was a loss of leadership in Washington earlier this year. So we have this incredible opportunity to see cities as these complex adaptive systems that although we can't control them in a way that we, we like to think about command and control, we can, can we adapt them? Can we shift their trajectories to a more sustainable uh, goal or horizon? Um, I want to say that uh, we have not just a single view on how cities will be or should be, uh, or a very siloed perspective on that, but we also want to take cross-cutting perspectives and themes. And one of those key themes is urban resilience. Montreal, earlier this year in May, experienced horrendous floods. Uh, we can think of Hurricane Sandy. We can think of all the hurricanes that we've had uh, this year in the U.S. There are uh, extremes happening because of climate change, but there are also other forms of environmental extremes that are occurring in urban environments. So we need to think about urban systems. Yes, they're complex, but can they be resilient? Can they re recover and rebound following stresses? So our vision, what's our collective vision of this? Well, we want to generate knowledge, knowledge of, that's applicable, that is evidence and data-driven, that has the rigor of science both social and natural sciences behind it. The goal is to improve human well-being while making cities more resilient, socially inclusive, so we diminish those inequities that we see inevitably in cities, and that they are less environmentally impactful. And of course, we tend to think of cities as being impactful, but can we, can we buffer that impact on the residents of cities by bringing in the natural environment? Can we create cities to be more hybrid? Can we improve human well-being by thinking about the mix of the built and the natural environment in our cities? 
So this leads me to the three grand themes that we have uh, within this urban hub of research. Here you see them to the left, we have the natural environment, the built environment, and governance. This is our first, first cut on what we think are the key initiatives, and we want to have obviously cross-cutting uh, uh, and cross-pollinating research going on between these three themes. Now, the natural environment, it seems like a strange thing to talk about in an urban project, right? But increasingly, people are realizing that natural spaces, ecosystems, are an essential part of human well-being in cities. That hasn't always been the case. But if we want cities that are going to buffer floods, mitigate urban heat extremes, then natural ecosystems like Mont Royal, which is just behind us, which is a, a vast green space in an urban environment, down to the smallest pocket of green space in your local park or the bioswell that's at the corner of your street, contributes to the well-being in a city. So the natural environment is an essential component and will be part of the key solutions uh, as we move ahead. So the, the built environment, oh, when we think about a city, the cities are incredibly complex mosaics of where people live, where we do industry, where we have businesses, and they're all intermingling and interconnected by transport systems. So every day, cities are moving fluxes of thousands and hundreds of thousands of individuals into and out of its center. That's a huge challenge, and we have to reconfigure our built environment. Many of our cities have legacies of past infrastructure plans. Are those current structures adapted? Many of them are maladapted, and many cities are rebuilding, just, just like Montreal. And we need to do that in a smart way that, it, that builds into account the long view, the sustainability view for cities. And then governance. So governance, I mean, cities are a remarkable thing. They're, they, they're at the threshold, they stand across multiple jurisdictions between the state and civil society, between the natural environment and the built environment, right? And so that's an incredible opportunity to change how we govern. As we go from, if we decentralize to more polycentric notions of governance, where we try to tackle uh, issues more regionally, more locally, more spatially, in a way that uh, reflects the dynamics of cities. Of course, there will be, as we change how we govern uh, cities as complex adaptive systems, that means there will be winners and losers. By definition, we'll be winners and losers. So it becomes a political problem. And so we have to think about the politics and the policies that go with the governance. And as we bootstrap, as we bootstrap our cities to the future, we have to change all these things simultaneously. So uh, I will hand over the floor to David, who will talk about the projects that we've initiated that allow the crosstalk between our major themes. Sandy. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, what I'm going to do is give you a little rundown of the three projects that we've identified as the opportunities for the um, adapting urban environments for the future hub here. And before I talk about the projects themselves, I want to give you a little bit of an idea of the philosophy and the orientation that we brought to bear to decide what to focus our limited attention and resources on. The first thing is that we are um, very uh, cognizant as urban researchers of the fact that urban systems are multiscalar. Um, what happens in the city is intimately connected to suburban um, fringes of, the, of cities, to regional landscapes and hinterlands, and in fact to entire global networks, uh, both social, economic, um, and natural. Uh, just thinking about the fact that the power that we rely on in Montreal is drawn from a large hydroelectric landscape that stretches thousands of kilometers, and every time someone gets in their car, unless it's a, um, a Tesla, they're relying on enormous operational landscapes which extract oil from across the globe, process it in other sites, and bring it to our cities. Um, so with that, um, that perspective in mind, we wanted to identify projects that, kind of, that spanned a range of scales, from uh, a local city and its, uh, its metropolitan region, all the way up to the global scale as a, as a scale of urban analysis. Secondly, we wanted projects which um, spanned a range of sites starting with right here um, in Montreal, um, but, but making sure that we were kind of oriented to the rest of the world. Uh, so we want, among our three projects, we want to choose some that were where there's a lot of local expertise being brought to bear on local issues, um, to projects where people can really think big and think big in a kind of globally distributed fashion. And then lastly, we wanted to make sure that the projects we identified offered a range of possible knowledge and kind of social impact outcomes, um, which is to say that um, we wanted to make sure that we had some projects where 
we already had people in place who had identified problems and had identified ways to solve those problems, where we could see real tangible immediate impacts of the research. But at the same time, we wanted to offer room for more speculative kind of blue sky outcomes, where we can identify important questions, but maybe we're not sure just yet how to answer those questions, or what the implications of those answers are likely to be 5, 10, 20, 50 years down the line. Um, so we've chosen three projects which we hope do a good job of representing the diversity of these three, uh, of these three factors, and I'm going to take you through them one by one. Project number one is that we want to develop Montreal as a living lab for urban sustainability research. Um, what we want to do is create a node that connects research and policy about urban sustainability in the Montreal region. So to begin with, what that means is bringing together existing research at McGill and at other universities in the region. Um, and also identify big opportunities for research that isn't being done yet in Montreal, but that could be. And beyond that, we also want to engage with existing policy initiatives happening around urban sustainability questions in the Montreal region, such as the development of a green belt in Montreal, uh, the Mayor's Resilient Montreal Working Group, um, the recent uh, floods which happened into the, uh, earlier in the year, and the development of the REM Transportation Network. Our vision here is to create a real positive sum node that connects, uh, that makes all sorts of individual research projects that are engaging with sustainability questions in the Montreal region that makes each of those projects better than it would have been by allowing researchers and policymakers to share data, to share questions, and to share findings. And we think that Montreal is a really ideal spot for this kind of research. Obviously, we're all here, so that's, um, that, that's got something uh, that's easy about it. But at the same time, Montreal is an important international hub linking Anglophone and Francophone cultures in North America, in Europe, and Africa. It's home to over 60 international organizations, um, some of which have urban sustainability as a core mission, such as Future Earth. And it's also, the, Montreal is the first Canadian member of the 100 Resilient Cities Network, which is funded by the Rockefeller Foundation. At the same time, Montreal is a medium-sized city with four million people, which places it um, in actually in, in good company. Hundreds and hundreds of cities, and actually where most of the urban population lives around the world, is not in gigantic mega regions or in small towns, but in mid-sized cities like Montreal, which means that the kind of research and kind of findings we can develop here have a really good chance of being um, applicable and insightful in other contexts around the globe. Another interesting fact is that Montreal lies in the St. Lawrence River, as we know, which is one of the largest freshwater ecosystems in the world, and Montreal is embedded in a very rich and productive agricultural landscape, which um, exports agricultural products locally, nationally, and internationally. Finally, I'll just say that um, Montreal is a region that's experiencing um, already quite uh, disruptive impacts of climate change. Um, in fact, Montreal is uh, projected to get, all, in some cases, about double the global average of uh, global warming uh, we're going to experience here, which means it's a very important site for uh, studying the, the, the urban, the local, and the regional impacts of climate change. So what we want to do um, with the Living Lab is we want to, as I said, connect existing research, which is using Montreal and the Montreal region as a case, um, but make that research speak to um, each other in a, um, in a more practical way. Um, we also want to, uh, to allow policymakers and the public to benefit from the insights that researchers are already developing, plus the insights that are still yet to come, which means um, one of our goals is to develop a dashboard of sustainability indicators, um, which could be publicly accessible and which could be used to, to help evidence-based policymaking on sustainability in the Montreal region. Um, we think that McGill's already got a ton of capacity and expertise to look at issues related to food, waste management, transportation, extreme weather, governance, land use changes, and development patterns and equity, um, and we really look forward to building um, that expertise by involving more researchers at McGill and also um, at other universities um, around the Montreal region. Our second project, um, which kind of expands the scale of analysis a little bit from the, the local um, in Montreal to the national is uh, the Panama Research and Integrated Sustainability Model, or PRISM. And the idea here is to develop an integrated model of urban interactions with the regional hinterland. Um, the project's going to use spatial modeling in combination with other uh, research methods to create a, a plan for growth in the metropolitan area, which takes into account regional and national environmental resource and social impacts. And what's great about this project is that we've already got some really strong existing leadership in place. Um, Brian Leung and Catherine Potvin from Biology are currently leading the PRISM project, and they're taking advantage of really rich and growing connections between researchers at McGill and uh, down in, in Panama, in the country and in the city. Um, Panama is a great location to try to develop this kind of integrated model, um, because the metropolitan region is experiencing massive economic and population growth. Um, 
it is a hub of international shipping traffic worldwide. Panama is a major site for global uh, trade and logistics. And it also has a highly skewed wealth distribution, which means that there are major inequality and social implications for how growth is managed in both economic and environmental terms. Um, to address these complex issues, PRISM is going to um, uh, apply a range of approaches, including cutting edge models for land use, hydrological models, as well as whole country economic models. We're gonna use GIS mapping, um, experiments and field studies, um, stakeholder interviews and participatory approaches which will integrate traditional ecological knowledges. Now our final project that I want to tell you about is the one where we've allowed ourselves to be the most speculative um, and kind of dream big dreams and it's called sustainable growth on an urban planet. And this project is motivated by um, the idea that Andy already brought up which is that uh, the, the planet is currently undergoing a one-time urban transition. And one way to think about it is that over the next century, the number of people who are living in cities is going to triple. And almost all of that growth is going to be occurring in the global south. Now the thing is, because urban infrastructure is so long lasting, how urban growth is, uh, occurs and is managed over this next 100 years is going to set the script for actually hundreds of years of uh, human interactions with the planet. Um, with the natural environment. You know, we're living in Montreal with um, decisions that were made to, um, as far as our transportation system, as far as our built environment, um, the form of our buildings, that were made 100 years, 200 years ago. And the same is going to be true going forward, which means we've got this one-time opportunity um, to really understand the sustainability implications of the current models of urban growth which are unfolding in, um, in sites across the planet, as well as the implications of possible new ways to think about how we can manage um, and, and steer urban growth in more um, environmentally sustainable ways. Particularly what we're interested in looking at is um, the growth of new cities um, in the Global South, particularly in East Asia, um, uh, which are ki kind of created out of whole cloth almost, uh, usually in the fringe of existing metropolitan areas, as well as the more kind of orga organic growth uh, and sprawl of existing metropolitan regions. So what we'd like to do is um, allow our ourselves and uh, researchers the opportunity to really uh, consider and reconsider uh, the theoretical basis of how we understand urban sustainability in the context of urban growth worldwide. We want to identify different typologies of urban growth and sustainability outcomes, and we want new methods for measuring and characterizing urban metabolisms in these contexts. So those are uh, the three projects that we've identified. These are still very much in formation. One thing I want to say is that tomorrow morning, as many of you hopefully are already aware, we're going to be hosting a, a kickoff workshop um, from 9.30 um, through lunch, um, where we're going to bring together a set of researchers who um, want to contribute to this project and really get a, um, try to kind of nail down um, in some fine detail how these projects are all going to evolve um, over the next several years. Um, we, we want to make sure that we are creating knowledge that has real social impact, um, both in terms of urban policy making and also in terms of public understanding of how cities relate to the natural environment. And our long-term goal is that um, we think that we can really mobilize and expand the capacity for urban sustainability research at McGill so that we can um, create a multi-university strategic research cluster on urban sustainability, which can be uh, FRQ funded uh, by 2019. So thank you very much.